So right now I'm eating my totally ghetto California snack of <laughs> uh, artificial <laughs> crab on, on a rice cake. So even he's not joking. <laughs> Jesus. He's not so, joking. He, he is eating artificial crab on a rice cake. So even though I, I don't vote for Democrats, I, 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 I'm not I'm not liberal anymore. I'm, I still eat the stuff. Well, at least it's like not on like a soy cracker. Oh, fuck that. I don't eat soy. <laughs> you like soy sauce? A little bit. Not too much. Look right behind you. 180. Oh! I, I brought you something. He brings me alcohol. <laughs> You're going to drink with me? I'm going to drink with you. Yay! Yay! <laughs> so welcome to the, Mon pie. the Monday night threesome. And I know that you're dying to get on, Wolf, but as you can hear my voice, I'm, I'm really not high energy tonight. There is no way I could keep up with you. It would become the Wolf Show <laughs> or, or the Shanane Show. In fact, any show we bring you on, it's going to become the Shanane show. <laughs> but but we, we will do that. I promise. Okay. We will. This is, this is something that, that must be prepared. It must be done delicately. <laughs> Maybe with the addition of alcohol for me, too. Yeah. Um, Ooh, that sounds nice. <clears throat> so, um, Soylent crackers? Hey, fuck you. I'm not a bug man and never will be. <laughs> <coughs> oh, hey, yeah, real fine. quick, audience, yes. if you have not listened to Wolf 10's interview of Marvelous oh about their God. time in a cult, that was amazing. Fucking check it out. Oh my God. Like, that blew my mind. I unfortunately couldn't listen to all of it, but what I heard was amazing. Yeah, I couldn't finish it either, but I, I was in shock at some of the stories she was telling. I was like, holy shit. So, yes, please go check it out. It was a great show. So, um, tonight, uh, Janelle says she has some topics for us. Um, I don't I don't think uh, I feel like talking about, um, you know, adopted Ethiopian kids adopted by uh, lefty pricks. Uh, shooting up houses and then trying to describe them as poor and mentally ill people. Uh, so we're not going to discuss that. Wait, what? <laughs> I'm so glad I don't listen to the news anymore. <laughs> oh, oh. Um, BLM shooting. has their newest martyr. I'm uh, waiting for the starving Mormon, this, uh, Marvin means to uh, know, start hitting. <laughs> white, white NPR uh, type latte sipping family of white people adopted a uh, Ethiopian kid at age four and he still grew up to being a gangbanger and he shot up his girlfriend's house. Well, you know, you know, you, you got to understand that's his heritage. Oh, okay. And I did not realize gangbang heritage came from Ethiopia. I thought that was an American thing. And he shot up the house. Fortunately, the two kids and the woman inside didn't die, but now BLM has rallied around this this poor black kid who's been shot because all he was doing was shooting up a person's house, trying to kill three people at random. Hey, you know. I'm so glad I don't pay attention to the news. And the poor woman who's nearly got killed and lost her two kids is being bullied by BLM because you know they care. All right, we'll talk about more fun stuff instead, because I have fun, a list fun. of stuff that's fun and a list of stuff that we can rip on. Okay, which so is also the, fun. All right, the first thing is Eastman and Laird have come out with the finale to their Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles arc called The Last Drone In. I read it yesterday. It is fucking epic. It disregards the majority of the Archie comics and IDW run, and it's pretty much the Eastman and Laird's 80s run. Uh, really? Yes. I highly recommend it. It is post-apocalyptic New York. And when I say post-apocalyptic New York, it is 1980s post-apocalyptic New York. 
the water is toxic waste, the air is shit, everything is cyberpunk. It's either a burned out nuclear ruin or a cyberpunk city. Cool. And uh, you basically, it's the cap on the story for all the main characters. I will say, heads up, it is a very bittersweet ending. Oh, uh, somebody dies. Oh, not just somebody. There's somebodies that mm -hmm. die. Uh, but I, I, in my opinion, it's not woke either. Holy shit, it's not woke, guys. Oh, well, that's reason enough, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the only thing I would think that might have been a little woke was the talking about how um, pollution had made everything toxic. But when they were writing the stories in the 80s, I remember all of the post-apocalyptic stories where pollution was making shit toxic. So that's why I'm saying it takes off pretty much from their 80s storyline and disregards everything else. Badass. Good. Yes. Sounds good. Um, the artists that they got were really good. And I will say there are no hot women, but the reason there are no hot women is because these women that are in it have been at war. They are scarred. They are fucked up. What's They're not called? meant to look manly. Oh, the last Ronin. That, you know, uh, like April O'Neil, I will give this, it's a tiny spoiler. April O'Neil is old now and she is scarred because she's been fighting a war against the Foot Clan. Cool. So, uh, yes. Uh, you know, I approve of that because, uh, you know, it, it, if you've been through hell, you shouldn't look like a runway model, you know? Yeah. Uh, like I said, when I say the women are not buxom and beautiful, it's because they've been fighting a war. It's more realistic, but they are not ugly. So April O'Neil is not the hot young thing that she <clears throat> used to be. She's a well. woman in her 60s at this point in the story. Like even you wow. see that she still has red hair, but the roots of her hair, as she's growing her hair out, you can see they're turning gray. Well, I'm looking at it here in the one picture, she looks like Sarah Connor. Yes, yes. And yeah. the, her story is amazing. And I'm not gonna, like I said, I don't wanna give you any more spoilers because then it will just spoil the whole thing. But guys, honestly, spend the money it's, I want to say, it's like reading um, the Grendel when it was Orion's reign and Grendel Prime. It was like reading when Marvel had the 2099 run. It's like got the Judge well, Dread and Strontium Dog, all the good post-apocalyptic cyberpunk stuff from the 80s. Well, we'll have to get this. Yes. We will and absolutely have to get you. this. Thank you. So there is a gl there are glimmers of hope. I've pretty much given up on the comic book industry, but the fact that Eastman and Laird were able to get some of the rights back to finish their side of the story and do it correctly, and it's it's not written for today's fans. It's written for us, the old fans. It's not written for anybody new. New people. So, so what you're telling me is, in this, April O'Neil is a Irish american not not a 12 year old black girl with gigantic glasses who's a genius no she is a 60 year old irish american sarah connor works for me yeah it worked for me too like i said she's not hot anymore but they're going by the timeline she's old now she's and there's no lady citizen. turtle right nope no lady turtles no venus no venus de milo god that was a bad idea yeah that didn't last very long, did it? No. No, no, nobody liked it. Oh, yeah, Neostar. Yes, so he's read it. Yeah, Foot Clan and Baxter Stockman are in it. I mean, it's fucking epic. No, nice. I, I wouldn't. I skipped making dinner. I was supposed to make dinner, but instead I blew it off to read the whole fucking book. <laughs> Sounds good. Yes, so, and uh, Kevin Eastman is going to be at Comic-Con, so the one glimmer of hope for Steve and I, the one positive thing we're looking forward to at Comic-Con is we are going to get there as soon as we can, stand at the front of the line, and get a, his autograph on that book. And we're probably nice. going to grab a couple of uh, Steve's old school uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Is the art done by Ross Campbell? Or I mean Sophie, I'm sorry. Oh, Ross. is Sophie Campbell the trans no. artist? No, and somebody said, no, it's not Sophie ross campbell um it's oh i can't uh, it's ross two campbell brothers wet moon 
Uh, Esau. <laughs> oh, shoot. I wish I had the book on me right well, now. Well, I'm just glad it, it isn't Ross because we used to be a friend of his. Well, he used to do t turtles. That's yeah. why they were asking. Because he, he was. And um, let me tell you, as a man, he was one of the nicest people I'd ever met. Kind of shy. You know, kind of quiet. Then put on a dress, complete cunt. Being honest, I'm, I'm, what, what, should I not say such things? We're is, trying to be happy tonight. What? This, this is a happy topic. <laughs> is Sophie Campbell the one that drew Gem in the holograms? Yes. One of them, yes. Okay, I liked it. I think they were still known as Ross Campbell when they put their original cyberpunk themed mm -hmm. Gem in the holograms up on um, Deviant Art before mm -hmm. it got woke and like all the women were fat. Yeah, uh, this was uh, prior to uh, changing to Sophie. Okay, yeah. His synergy looked awesome because his synergy looked like a cyberpunk hologram. I really liked that mm -hmm. artwork. In fact, I was like, if they ever do a reboot of Gem and the Holograms, it should be in the future with this artwork. I guess I cursed it. <laughs> 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 because, I mean, it was amazing. I actually, um, when I had my Deviant out, uh, Art account, I favorited all of that. So I could have access to it and show it to my friends. I was like, this guy is fucking epic. Yeah, Ross well, now, is one hell of an artist. Yes, his cyberpunk I do mean that in the great. post tense. HRT does bad things to your brain. I'm just saying. Well, I'm sorry that Sophie became a cunt. Because yeah. their previous art was really fucking good. Look, look we it were such on good terms that he had given us a pull quote for one of our books, and we thanked him with a little Gamera statue. Really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. That sucks. You know what? It breaks my heart that the industry just shit on you guys. I know I say it like I sound like a broken record, but you guys should be at the top of the game, millionaires. And I show my friends your Catwoman hey. stuff. All the time. I mean, oh my god! Hey, you know I'm what I've heard always gets showing you it ahead? off. You know what I've heard gets you ahead. Fight is if you feud with Ethan Van Skyver, <laughs> that somehow that makes you a, a, a skillful and important artist. Why would you I've heard that if you start a feud with him, feud with him, it sells books. I mean, maybe I'm just too much of a decent person not to talk shit <laughs> about Ethan at least. <laughs> Look, I don't even know what the fuck is going on with EVS anymore. There's always a fight of the week. The man is a brilliant artist. Yeah, um, he is. He's an amazing artist. And he's not drawing anymore, well, at least not hey, on this look, show. Look, I can I can criticize his choices, but he's always been nice to us. Mm -hmm. I will say he's always been complimentary of our work. So I, I can't say anything bad there. He's been really good. I know that at the cons, he'd always been good to fans unless they were being dicks. But no, no, I'm not actually talking about EVS. I'm talking about all the people that start feuds with him just to get publicity. Oh, you Have you noticed like, that? You remember when Donny Cates called in live on his show and claimed he didn't know he was live and was shit-faced and was like starting static with him while John Malin and Cecil, I think it was John Malin and Cecil were on the show? <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, guys. No, it's just, it does kind of baffle me how many people have decided that's the route to success. It's because, I mean, as much as they don't want to say it, EVS really brought a spotlight to the new wave of indie comics. And yeah, he did. The count, it was the new counterculture. Yeah, yeah, it absolutely was. Um, but, you know, you know, at some point, just that horse has been beaten, Okay. I don't think that starting a feud with, the, with with him is really all that innovative at this point. I mean, you've got to be creative now. I mean, I mean, if you start a feud with him now, you're basically Liam. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like, okay, that, that was creative. You're, you're giving me a look. Oh, my God. Like, oh, God, I just don't know how to explain it. I mean... EVS has become the platform for drama mongers. And that's not saying he's the drama monger. No, that, Honestly, I agree. Honestly, I, I, at first I was like, is he bringing the drama? Because I know he likes internet blood sports. But then it got to the point where I was like, no, these people just want attention. So they act as crazy as fucking possible to get on his show 
So he can rip them apart for shits and giggles. I mean, seriously, I think for him now, it's just become become fun and games. Well, at that point, it kind of has to, right? Yeah. Like, I don't know how the man keeps his sanity. I don't agree with everything he says. And sometimes I have to eye roll and be like, like, I remember when we were calling him Uncle Ethan. It's like, oh, God, Uncle Ethan, come on. By the way, did, a side note, does everybody remember when he used to read the Ewoks children's books to people for a bedtime story? <laughs> <laughs> That shit was gold. <laughs> this is before he was super popular. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yes, he is a drama magnet. But you know what? I'm not going to fault him. I know there's a lot of haters of him out there, but the man knows how to make his money. And you know what? He's got the talent to back it up. And when I see people shitting on his art, like the mainstream people, I'm like, fuck you. You you probably couldn't even draw a goddamn stick figure. I've seen no, the art that comes out of Marvel talented. and DC. Yeah. Fuck you, dude. Ethan, Ethan can draw. Ethan can draw circles around you. There's a reason Jordan B. Peterson had him as the artist for his 12 Rules of Life. Yeah. By the way, I highly recommend people getting that book, even if you don't read it. Ethan's art is really good. <laughs> well, you know, you know, let's see. So, yeah, Ethan's Ethan feuding is played out. We need to we need to find someone new. Who who could we start a feud with? Um, huh? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, to... How about the know Cookie Monster? Um, Dan Slot. Uh... Well, uh, why monster, would you, you want to start a feud or with Dan Slot? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm all for, uh, you know, hating on Tom King till the cows come home, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How about the actor who does Elmo's voice? Kevin Clash? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know he was also the voice of Baby Dinosaur on Dinosaur? Okay, now I want him dead. <laughs> okay, now there's a you reason to I, hate I him. I can hear it now. I can totally hear it. I mean, I really was just throwing names out for absolutely no reason. But if he's personally responsible for that damn Baby Dinosaur, fuck him. Well, I hated that show. It was the Hen a Henson production. I hated that show. That was the show that was just, just trying too hard. It didn't have to suck. It had every reason not to suck. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, I I've, got, I've got one. I've got one. The new Monsters trailer. Oh, oh. fuck. There, there we go. Let's hopes. let's start a feud with Rob Zombie for that uh, that abomination. Yeah. How do we get Rob Zombie to notice us? <laughs> Okay, I'm going to say only one thing about that trailer. Dan Roebuck, the guy that plays Grandpa, is the only one that sounds like the original actor. He sounds like fucking Al yeah. Lewis. I, the I only agree. One. I'm like, come on, guys. The guy that's playing Herman Munster doesn't even sound like Fred Gwynn. He's also well, the only one that acts like the original character. Yes, if I had to see the movie, I would only see it for Dan Roebuck. Because that got when he spoke as grandpa, I was like, oh, it's Al Lewis. Holy shit. <laughs> well, but yeah. And of course, I knew as soon as he said he was doing the Munsters that Sherry Zombie was going to be uh, Lily. His well, wife is in everything. He seems to have gotten completely freaking wrong. Okay. But Rob Zombie should know better. The Munsters were working class people. In the yes. movie, in the preview, they're not working class. No, it, it's like they got them confused with the Adamses, who are all uh, eccentric, rich weirdos. <laughs> yes. Yes. Because if I remember correctly, didn't Herman have a bunch of different blue collar jobs throughout the series? Like, I remember at one point, he even was a race car driver for the indie circuit. Yes. <laughs> That's a good episode. <laughs> but yeah, you know, Herman had blue collar jobs. Yes. You know? He had a blue collar job. Uh, Lily was like the the poster woman for uh, you know um, Susie Homemaker. Um, you know they were. It was supposed to be Leave It to Beaver, but with monsters. Yes, and it was brilliant. I love the fact that little Eddie Munster. Nobody gave a shit that he was a fucking werewolf. No, nobody cares. No, he was dealing with elementary school problems. And I always found it comedic that they told Marilyn, who was hot as fuck, like just as hot as Lily, yeah. but she was normie hot, that she was the ugly duckling of the family. Yeah. And she, but 
it, because of the way she was raised, she couldn't ever hold a boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> That was a real, actually, I saw the Munsters before I saw the Adams family. So it holds a special place in my heart. And I even remember when Al Lewis for a while, um, before he passed away, um, oh gosh, what was the show that it was Joe Bob and he did like the drive in, the horror movie drive in? Do you guys know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, Joe Bob Briggs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe, didn't Al Lewis guest star a couple of times? As Grandpa I, Munster on that show, he get it was either him or maybe it was Elvira. Um, I think they both did. I just know that uh, Grandpa um, showed up basically playing uh, Grandpa in uh, Gremlins Two. That's yeah. right, being a, uh, a a a horror movie host. Now I want to watch Gremlins Two again. Oh my! I okay. I know a lot of people didn't like it as much as the first one, but the fact oh, that John it. Glover played donald trump but he was just called clamp yes that was brilliant so basically it took place in trump towers i love the fact that you had a female gremlin that used her big tits to seduce a human yep you uh, had specifically seducing the doctor from voyager yes uh was it robert picardo that's the yes. actor's name and uh you had the genius gremlin that kept breaking the fourth wall brain Yes. And then you had the one that was all vegetables that would hide in the salad bar at the fucking <laughs> cafeteria. I mean, it was brilliant on so many levels, but I guess a lot of people just, it didn't have the small town feel, you know, but for me, I like the fact that there were more individual gremlins. They still all work together, but mm -hmm. you had several arcs going on. And I love the fact you had the alcoholic cook that had the microwave show. Yes. That kept pouring her alcohol into her stew. <laughs> oh, and you can't forget Christopher Lee. Oh my gosh, that's right. He was the evil scientist that yes. like caused everything to go wrong. That movie's brilliant. It had it is. It had so many actors in it that were either really well established character actors or had not made it as like established actors yet. Like John Glover hadn't been on the scene that long. And now I will always remember his performance as um, Lionel Luther on Smallville to be one of the best villain performances ever. I, well, I, I love John Glover. He plays so many good villains. So was that Trump Tower they used? No, it was supposed to be based on Trump Tower. That's interesting because I believe Clamp Industries was also heavily influenced by the Turner Network. Yeah. Yes, he was supposed to be an amalgamation of Donald Trump and Ted Turner. <laughs> I mean, fucking brilliant, in my opinion. Yeah. Sorry, I'm dropping f bombs because I'm drunk, guys. Sorry. Oh, well, okay. Why are you apologizing? It's our show. <laughs> okay. I mean, I mean, if it was Wednesday, we try to tone it down a little, although we've been failing at that. <laughs> you know what? I need to write a book so I can be a guest on that show. <laughs> I need to write a book, guys. Help me well, out. <laughs> Well, we, we do have uh, several people who have advice for that. <laughs> you know, you know what we could do? We, we, you know what would just completely change the ratings for our show? We'd suddenly, everybody would start tuning in. More titties? More titties. We just have a show called Tit Talk. There you go, Tit Talk. <gasps> we need to do that. And this is every week, just get you two, a little sauced, and... <laughs> And get you guys started on talking about boobs it. and it'll be two women and then me kind of egging you on which you know that way the no, moderator no, you won't be egging us on you'll be milking it oh, God. see this is why we have to do it, have... God damn it. whatever i was gonna say is over i, I don't it's gone the idea is gone i don't even know what i was talking about Okay, sorry guys. I threw. I threw. Oh Jesus! I really am drunk. I poured myself a, a triple of single barrel scotch. Whoa! <laughs> oh, okay, dude! I told okay, you I'm having a great day. A I am sake. celebrating. Can you bring the bottle or bring both bottles? We each have our own favorite flavor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In fact. And maybe I shouldn't say this online, but I was thinking about trying to figure out how to sneak some booze into SDCC and then 
uh, live streaming and putting it on the Discord? <laughs> Uh, well, you could do the, the classic way of uh, putting a, you know peppermint schnapps in a, uh, a mouthwash bottle. Oh, shit. Yes. Just say I'm carrying my luggage with me. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm traveling. I got my luggage with. Okay. I've got my uh, Shochiko by for me and your Nigori. Yes. Nigori. Yep. Nigori. Also Shochiko by. Well, you like plum wine, though. I you prefer, prefer. I prefer plum wine. Okay, so so we're all we're all gonna do this here, and okay, so yeah, we're brainstorming a new show, Titty Talk. <laughs> Wait, I know we have other wonderful females in the audience that have just as big hooties, but we well, should no, have no, all no. types see, of hooties on. Well, see, yeah, I mean, I I know that we've got a few other women in the audience who are pretty well stacked. Uh, Ah, uh, screw it. If she'll get mad That's at me, if, if she gets mad, if she gets we're, mad. We're, I know that I know that Catherine's pretty stacked. We're, we're, we're all about writing, right? So yeah. we call it Lost in the Stacks. Yes. <laughs> Lost. <laughs> yeah, but I know that Catherine's fairly stacked. Um, definitely. Uh, well, Fair Maiden White is, and so mm -hmm. is um, Star Storyteller. Mm -hmm. But you know, you know, it, we don't have to single it out like that because you know there are also women who love the titties. They don't have them. Yeah. So, can I just say I love my boobs? I do. They're awesome. They're they're pretty badass. <laughs> Steve will be doing work, and I just walk behind him while he's typing up some email, and I just plop them on his head. Why <laughs> well, ever do that to stops. me? Because you're usually writing something important. So I wait until you pause for two seconds and then I wrap them around your neck. I mean, I do think it's pretty funny oh, when you I get your shirt off and you and you like flex your muscles up and you'll go obey me and because you stand right up <laughs> and you'll yell, say it. Obey me! <laughs> you'll yell, obey me! And my, and my attention's gotten. <laughs> well, that night, um, I know how to flex my pectorals she, so, I can, she's, so yep. I can make them jump she's practiced enough to make them jump oh you did that too i do mm -hmm. that too <laughs> hey you know well a it's i fun. thought it was neat and then i found out that it helps prevent sagging so it's like oh i'm totally doing this it does more than prevent sagging it makes them perkier well, I, I i have learned after you got very good at it <laughs> <laughs> so you know win-win all around <laughs> Oh Del in the disguise says your your tatas fell to your belly button. Is this a good or a bad thing? I mean, are, are we talking saggage or are we just talking they got so damn big that I do not know. Uh all well, right. Tell your wife it is good therapy for you mm -hmm. to stick them on your head. It it will re release good endorphins. It will. Oh, yes. yeah, absolutely. I will say that, you know, I can be in the middle of a post-traumatic stress incident. And unless it's really, really bad, um, no matter what you're thinking, if you have your, your big titty wife grab your head and just shove your, your face in her tits, it's really hard to think of anything else. <laughs> I mean, at least for a few seconds there, you're not going to think about anything else. Whatever's on your mind, whatever it is that's causing me go, to go bonkers, just stops. No, it, it helps. I've noticed it puts a smile on my husband's face. I mean, I, I don't just, I don't do it just while he's working. I just walk into the room. I'm like, you know what? He needs some boobs in his face. And I'll just <laughs> kind of ram his head in between my chest. And you he's need happy. need to do that more. Well, then don't sleep when I'm awaken at home <laughs> yeah well i can't help that right now yeah that's the only thing that we can... you sleep through the boobs look it's not my fault i've gone nocturnal lately <laughs> hey issue you're not the only one i've been staying up till two or three in the morning I so, I can do that. <laughs> I, well, it's more just everything I was talking about earlier before the show mm -hmm. um, kind of fucked up my uh, sleeping schedule. 
But that's okay, because I'm probably going to sleep great tonight. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, we've been having um, uh, 110 days. So mm-hmm. sleeping through it is a hell of a lot better. <laughs> I know you guys don't want to come back to California, but we have to have the AC cranked on to about 73 every day to make sure that my mother doesn't get bed sores. So it's cold in our house. Like, please come on over. I will stick you in the guest room, which is actually the coldest room in the house. Wow. (laughs) And then I would just hand you bottles of my homemade alcohol and be like, have fun. (laughs) Uh, That sounds dangerous. Oh, but it would be so much fun, especially if like, like I hope to visit one time where I could come and do the live show in the garage with you guys and we could get shit faced together. Oh, that'd be great. That would be probably one of the most fun shows that we'd ever have. I, I would have to come by myself. Steve and Chris would have to be doing their own thing. But I think that would probably be a very funny show with the three of us around the mic. You have an open invite whenever. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Whenever. I actually think I, I know it's a little or it's a little under a year away, but it looks like we are finally going to be able to come out next spring. Yay! Good. So and we're going to try and make it a week. Oh, nice. Instead of just hey. five days. So and we on, can hang out for like two days, two or three days. On Titty Talk, we could like share listeners art. <gasps> yes. <laughs> Give me that hentai big booby art, please. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, With some of shit. <laughs> now, I only say this actually because, um, oh, was it Friday we did the show? Yeah, I think so. It was, uh, does liking busty women make you shallow and sexist? Yeah, that was Friday. That was one hell of a show, actually. Mm-hmm. I didn't expect that to go over so well. Wait, is that really a thing? Like, is the media and all culture and shit today saying that liking big tits is shallow and selfish? Because oh, if that's that the goes case... Back, that goes all the way back to, like, the 70s, though. I mean, feminists have been pushing that since at least the 70s, and then it really flared up in the 90s. And now, now it's just you got to cut them off. Well, I have kind of a funny story about that for you guys. Just yeah. speaking of big tits. So when I go over to check on my mom and you know, make sure she's okay, half the time she'll say to me, you've got big tits, Janelle. <laughs> <laughs> it's like she's forgotten I had them. Is, is it, yeah, is that like, is it a declarative statement or is it a, uh, you know, it's a surprise? declarative statement? And I always tell her, I'm like, it's from your side of the family because my mom was stacked too. And so was my grandmother and my great grandmother. I mean, <laughs> stacked. My great grandmother cat was stacked like you. Whoa. Yeah. Damn. So, I mean, like, we're talking, but she was also a farmer's wife. So after a while, all that hard work and they definitely, did I tell you the story about the time I asked, I saw my grandmother, like without her top on, I'm going to tell this story. You guys are going to laugh. Okay. So apparently when I was like six or seven, I walked into the bedroom and I, my grandmother forgot to lock the door and I walked into her bedroom and she was taking off her bra. And apparently I went up to her and said, Grammy, I'm sorry, your boobs melted. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Oh fuck! Well, <laughs> you know, I, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna say something now. I will say that Cat doesn't look her age, and she definitely takes care of herself, which Aww, thank you is beneficial. But I think as a culture, we've just got to accept. You know, youth is a transitory thing, and so is youthful beauty, and just appreciate it while it's there. Don't mm-hmm. worry about it. I, I think. Uh, I think we're far too obsessed with the fact that. At the youth is passing that you, know, you see like like ah, madonna is like that's just an embarrassment yeah she's kind of you know flogging a dead horse there with all of her uh, plastic surgery i mean oh, sure yeah. okay you want to get a tit lift yeah sure i understand that that makes sense but at some point you just got to accept you know we all age that's normal well it, it's one thing to have repair it's another to just be fighting reality. <laughs> uh, turning into a, a Cenobite. Yeah, exactly. Have your face just stretched open. <laughs> <laughs> or, or getting like a... donkey punched by a monstrous penis before having barbed wire wrapped around your face, like Channard. 
<laughs> wow. <laughs> it's true. I'm sorry. He got donkey punched by a penis monster. <laughs> well, that, that was his direct connection to uh, Leviathan. So I guess that's Leviathan's dick punched him in the head. <laughs> no, seriously. That was his direct connection. Uh, apparently. And that when it was severed, that's what killed him. <laughs> Well, no, no shit. I mean, you cut off Leviathan's dick. No wonder. Yeah. <laughs> and not kill the dork. Oh, good night, Tawaldi. I noticed that Tawaldi's taken. He's got to go to bed here. She, oh, I'm sorry. I, I don't know <laughs> if you're a guy or a girl. I'm really shit-faced. I apologize. <laughs> That's fine. That is absolutely fine. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, God. Now all I can think of is Hellraiser 2 and the penis monster in his head. <laughs> Actually, disguise, I was thinking of the one from uh, from Beyond. In a disguise, again, I think we worry far, far too much about these sorts of things. Yes, there will always be something about youthful beauty, but I'll admit there's also something exceedingly uh, sexy about a woman who hits her 30s and 40s as well. So, On Honestly, guys... I like being 43. I, I miss the fact I have my youth to be able to do my Kung Fu. That is something I do miss. My joints are just not like, hey, you can't do that shit anymore. But I've actually enjoyed aging. I really have. It's I, I think that mainstream culture is freaked out about aging. I'm it's actually, actually enjoying the boomers, it. Really. The only thing I miss about my youth, and really this is the only thing, is being able to stay up all fucking night and not sleep and be able to go to work and be fully functional and then stay up all night again till like 2 a.m. before finally crashing. I miss those days. I miss that too. I miss being able to go and role play a game for like eight hours. There we go. We're titty yes. talk. <laughs> it, you know, so like playing all night, you know, playing Vampire the Masquerade. Yes. Riffs all night long. And then maybe getting one or two hours of sleep and then going and working with children all day. That's what I did mm -hmm. <laughs> since I worked uh, as a special ed assistant. Oh, my God. So, well, no, actually, it wasn't that bad. I enjoyed working with those kids because a lot of times they would stick me with kids who were hardcore video gamers because we had a connection. And so nice. my whole thing was, okay, if you do this amount of work, I will sit on the internet with you. And for example, I had one kid that was obsessed with Fatal Fury. And so we would just look at everything about Fatal Fury. And that was the deal I made with him. It's like, okay, if you just, you do this for me, I'll do this for you. And you can tell me everything about it. And that's what we did. I mean, some kids were into comics. Some kids were into manga. I, I really think they liked me working with these kids because I was on the same level with them because I, I read and the same comics and the same manga, watch the same anime, play the same video games. So, but some days it was just like, oh God, am I going to make it through the school day? <laughs> but I do miss, I miss being able to run on one or two hours of sleep and then doing yeah. it again the next day for like two or yeah. three days. Mm -hmm. That's really the only thing I miss about my youth. Yeah. So, People, if you're in your 20s, really don't stress about aging. You're going to lose a lot of stuff that was awesome in your 20s, but you're going to you're gonna gain a lot in your 30s mm -hmm. and your 40s. And I think it's a good trade-off. I, I really don't think people should be afraid of aging. Like I said, I'm 43, and I'm okay with it. I don't mind that I've got crow's feet and wrinkles. It's okay because there's other benefits that come with it, and I really do enjoy it. No, I agree. You know, I, I wouldn't go back, <laughs> even if I could stay up all night. Yeah, yeah, like when you're 43, no one suspects you of shoplifting. I mean, <laughs> there, are, there are true advantages. <laughs> <laughs> I, there are things to think about, you know. What? You, know what I, you know what I do miss? I don't know about you guys, but being able to do road trips and just drive like 12 hours straight like you don't have to stop for a hotel that's one thing i miss also about being in my 20s yeah. just being able to drive it, it, it's the stamina it's the uh being able to just you know like you said just 
hop in your car and go until you know you decide to stop <laughs> yes that that's how steve and i used to roll we would literally just drive until it was time to stop and then just like find a hotel that was decent <laughs> didn't have to be fantastic you know just a place where we're no, we know we're not going to get robbed yeah yeah that's the important thing what making sure you don't get robbed yeah that you're stopping in a place that isn't too skeezy hey retneck yeah. just because you're 29 and you haven't been married yet don't give up no okay? don't give I, up I've known people who have got found their, I knew a guy that he was one of my dad's best friends that didn't get married till he was 40. He found his soulmate at 40. And I know that sounds old, but he married a really hot younger woman that was not a gold digger. Like she actually liked him because he was a very, he was a very, he still is for his age, a very handsome man. He's in his seventies now. And at 45, he had kids and we always joked that he was going to be the dad at the, his kids high school graduation in the walker so don't don't stress about that sometimes it doesn't happen in your 20s or your 30s so honestly i'm sure and you know what yes a lot of girls have ego today but <laughs> you know what there's also a lot it, yeah. of girls out there that are humble you just gotta mm -hmm. keep looking and yes, I'm giving advice while I'm shit faced. <laughs> That's fine. That's, That's okay. absolutely I know. Fine. I love it's it because I have no filter. <laughs> Isn't that great? I know. God, like I always worry when I come on, like, am I going to get Kat and is she in trouble? I don't want to get you well, guys in trouble. Why would you think you're going to get us in no, trouble? You, you couldn't because get us in trouble. Everybody's fucking anal today and I hate it. I hate it so much. Why do we have to be anal? Why can't we be offensive? Hey, did uh, look, look, I, I'll just make sure you don't have anything to worry about. There are only okay. two genders. Deal with it. There, there you go. See, I've done, I've committed the worst crime you possibly can. Say whatever you want now. <laughs> Seriously, say whatever you want. I've just broken the, the biggest rule in the world. There are two genders. Why don't we have bands with band members that are named Slymenstra Hyman anymore? Seriously. That is a very good question. Okay. Or okay. Ball no, stack. Wanna... Ball stack. I'm sorry. Ball sack. Or what was it? The uh oh was it oh, God the sex executioner. I'm yeah, sorry. Sex yes. Gore. Gore oh, had Gore. Gore was penises such... hanging out of their kilts. Why don't we have that shit anymore? It's not fair. <laughs> I'm so tired of PC culture. Grow a thick fucking skin. I did, and I was bullied all through elementary school, middle school, and high school. Jesus fucking Christ. Well, a lot of what Gore did was in response to pissing off the uh, PC uh, mommies mm -hmm. of the 90s. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. Come on, come on. Uh, tipper Gores. Yeah, so come on, Zoomers. It's time for you to do the same. Get everyone pissed off. No, the problem is, is that we have an entire generation who needs a fucking ball pit. Yeah. Okay, now now I'm going to take a step back from a topic, okay, about age, okay? And I'm okay. going to make my point that age, you can age beautifully, okay? Now, here's one actress, Kelly Riley. Well, gee, this is a shit picture. Never mind. No, no, that actually, I mean, it's grainy, but she's gorgeous. Yeah, and there's Melina Velva. This woman is approaching 50. She is very attractive. Mm -hmm. And, of course, uh, I think the lady of my dreams during the 90s. Oh Look my at her God, now. Jillian Anderson, she ages mm -hmm. so good. Yes. But the thing is, is she's not trying to be young. She's definitely mm -hmm. a woman of her age. Do you notice that? She's not mm -hmm. pretending to be 20. Oh, no. She still I listens to Skinny Puppy. What? I love the fact that she is an industrial goth. Yes. And she needs to be in more stuff. And I wish I had Ishi's talent because I would write a movie for her that was like a cyberpunk industrial horror film and have her be my lead. That'd be fucking... Ishi, get on that. No, no, no. <laughs> Here's the thing. My dream. My dream. And I wish I could have talked uh, the audio comics company into it, but mm -hmm. they just weren't interested. I want Case File Arkham to be an audio drama. Mm-hmm. And I would do uh, the second story, Her Blood Runs Cold, with Terry Farrell from DS9. Mm -hmm. 
as Glinda. <gasps> and that's a good choice. Yeah, because perf- that's kind of the voice I imagine. Mm-hmm. You know how she just she's always she keeps her cool. She keeps her cool, but she's playful. Exactly. Mm-hmm. That's always how I imagine Glinda. Mm-hmm. And then I would have Gillian Anderson play um, Asmith, the femme fatale. Oh my gosh! Okay, and, and we then need to I, find you an animator or someone. Like honestly, I I know you want to do it as an audio drama. I want to see it as an animation, like good eighties nineties animation. And then um, for Hank Flynn, I'd want oh shit, the Punisher. What's his name? Oh, Thomas uh, Jane. Yeah, Thomas yeah. Jane. Okay, you're going to laugh at me before you even said it. Is she the first person that popped into my head was Thomas Jane? Yeah, wow. he would have been perfect. He would yes. do the perfect voice. And the nice thing about audio is it doesn't matter what age you are or even what you look like. No. That's true. Although oh an gosh, animation they're... would be good too. Oh my gosh. I'm just now imagining um, Jillian Anderson's voice as Azareth. But it, it, that smooth, sultry voice that she has. It's mm-hmm. kind of smoky. Yeah, exactly. And it would be great to have her play something other than the smart woman. Yeah. Because she has such range and has never been allowed to use it. I always found that criminal that she could not break out of the fact that she'd had that image of being the smooth intellectual. Because, you know, okay, granted, it gave me a big boner and all. Um <laughs> But, you know, she has range to do other things, like in Princess Mononoke as the mm-hmm. Wolf Queen. Yeah. Oh, my God. She was so good in Princess Mononoke. Did you see something? What the hell is an industrial gob? She buys makeup by the truckload? Okay, in a disguise. Uh, really industrial. What it is, is for some reason, and I honestly to this day have not been able to find a concrete answer, industrial music and goth music got pushed together as sister genres. And I do not know why, because they really don't have much in common, other than sort of the look a little bit. Maybe it's because they date each other? That's the only explanation I've heard that made sense, is the industrial dudes always dated goth girls, Mm -hmm. because there was always a shortage of industrial girls. Mm -hmm. I it think just, there's some crossover too. Not there a is. lot, but and so um usually the two were put together as one. And usually when you had a club night, it was always goth industrial, and one room would be goth and the other would be industrial. Mm-hmm. Or you'd have um, you know, your goth set set, and then the next half hour would be all industrial. But anyway, goth industrial, it's just the genre. And Jillian Anderson dug industrial music, probably still does. Skinny Puppy's her favorite band. I mean, come on. That's pretty damn awesome. Hey, you guys would be proud of me. You know what I listened to while I was practicing today? I listened to the industrial channel on um, Amazon Music. So I had Skinny Puppy. I had um, uh, Frontline Assembly. I, I had Nine Inch Nails. They had some Rob Zombie in there, too. But it was like, I was kicking ass to that kind of music. It was so cool. You would have nice. been proud. Very nice. Oh, um, um, I okay, I'm probably going to botch their name because I'm kind of shit-faced. But I had Front 242 on as well. Nice. Yes. Actually, that was one of the ones where I was using my uh, stick, or my, I'm sorry, my staff. And I was like whacking things, and it was awesome because it really kick-ass. pumped me up. Do you know what era they were playing, or I want to say it was one of their. Uh, I want to say like their middle era, like it yeah, wasn't as experimental. It was more streamlined, but it wasn't. Yeah, modern. there are two that are very well remembered because they had their early days, and then they had their headhunter. Uh, front by front era and then right after that there was the tyranny for you ever era which is my favorite and then after that the band kind of started getting a little confused and whatever mm-hmm. actually i'm looking it up right now hold on it, it was headhunter actually when i was doing uh oh now you make me want to watch that movie because of the soundtrack uh yeah it was headhunter 
it was actually the Headhunter remix by Frontline Assembly was the song that oh, I ended wow. on today. Yeah, it was fucking epic because I was uh, at that point, I was actually doing my kicks. So I was doing like slicing kicks and I was working on my crescent kicks, all that shit you see in the movies. I was doing that. It was fucking awesome. That's but yes, awesome. I've noticed that I do my best workouts to industrial. Uh, that is not a wrong assumption, Retnick. Um, in fact, the soundtrack to Repo, uh, you know, originally it was written by the two guys who uh, mm -hmm. created the opera. Mm -hmm. But then the music was all written, rewritten by, I mean, some of the industry's best. You had Joseph uh, Bierche or whatever his mm -hmm. name is, uh, who was top, one of the top producers in the genre. Uh, you had the guy, uh, what is it, Eric Powell from 16 Volt actually uh, did a lot of that big chunk of um, uh, Zyklon B, mm -hmm. or not B, Zyklon, uh, oh God, the, the song everyone loves. Yeah. Zyklon oh, okay. Anatomy, or Zy, uh, no, no, Zydrate. Zydrate Anatomy, uh, 16, well, I'm a little drunk now, uh, <laughs> 16 Volt industrial band did some of the writing on that you had david j from bauhaus doing some of the bass playing on the uh soundtrack you had um oh god i mean well, it's you, a, you can't forget the uh, ogre yeah ogre was in the film from skinny puppy so yeah it, it, it's not a bad assumption okay wait ogre is it spelled o-h-g-r because that's on my list my industrial list when i listen to my playlists yeah ogre uh went, uh is a singer from skinny puppy he did a solo project as well okay yeah because it's um the song's called come down from the album Un undeveloped i think it is yeah like i said i have a whole list that i work out to it's usually either um dark wave or industrial I hate to say it, Mr. No, but I don't think such clubs exist anymore. And if they do, they're primarily populated by people my age. <laughs> I mean, it was kind of depressing to find out. There's like this band I like that was founded by two Gen Xers that called Nightclub, which I really like. Mm -hmm. I was looking at, you know, seeing what their, their concerts. Everyone was my age in the audience. <laughs> You're actually, yeah. I started listening to Nightclub because you recommended them to me. They're pretty good. They've got that like cross between synth wave and industrial, and I really like yeah. them. They they feel very cyberpunky. Yeah, they definitely. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. The one that really uh, has stuck with me is uh, the two where tracks. The, the video where it's just the uh, chick fight the entire time. Oh, that one's fun. Yeah, <laughs> she likes. She wants to play with fire. Yeah. That one's fun. Uh, no, I was actually thinking of those two. The track is California Killed Me, and then the other one is Civil War. Those two just nail it. California Killed Me. Oh, man. Yeah, when, I need uh, to go back go and to listen to that. bury my body, tell them California Killed Me. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, since you had Hollywood up, one of my... Um, I guess, I guess dreams, you could say, is somebody getting the rights back to that and doing the original Ralph Bashke edition. Oh, I agree. Edition. I thoroughly agree. And still keep the soundtrack because the soundtrack it, between a Mortal Kombat and Cool World, that was my introduction to the industrial world. And both those soundtracks are phenomenal. Like I had mm -hmm. no clue who my life with the Thrill Kill cult was until Cool World. Same thing with, I had no clue who Fear Factory was until Mortal Kombat. And I love the fact there was a window in the 90s between Where like nine great oh, fucking soundtracks. Oh, yeah. They're, I think they're two of the best soundtracks ever made. Uh, the, the Crow? Oh, that The was... Crow? Oh, my God. The Crow has some of the best music on it. And don't laugh. I think the first Matrix soundtrack. What? Had some Why of the would best I laugh? Oh, I, I had the first Matrix soundtrack. I still do somewhere. In fact, uh, the label I was working at, 20 Surf Circuitry, was in negotiations to sign uh, the band that did Club to Death. Mm -hmm. okay. And at the 11th hour, the guy says, uh, I've been licensed for a movie and I'm getting bigger, bigger offers now. Well, what movie? I can't tell you. <laughs> And it was the Matrix. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dominic Powell, I really hope I don't offend you. Thumbs up on Circle Jerks. Good Charlotte isn't punk. No, I'm sorry. Good Charlotte is not punk. Good Charlotte is mall punk. Yeah. 
which is not fun. They're hot topics. Yeah. Sorry. I never listened to Good Charlotte. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the most one of the most hilarious things ever was uh, Ishi and I. This was when we were um, still dating, um, and Ishi and I were flipping through channels, but we had the sound turned off because uh, um, this was during a commercial break. So it's like, okay, just sound turn off, and we hit MTV, and it's like, and we're watching this video of just this. Dude, he's just decked head to toe in black, and he's just you know railing on the on the um, on the microphone. It's like he's wow, banging his head. He's like, this guy's tearing into it. And it's like wow, this this looks awesome. What is this? And we turn on the sound, and it womp womp. This whiny, oh, nye, 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 nye. Yeah, yeah, this whiny emo rock shit. It was <laughs> good Charlotte, and it's just like oh, okay, yeah. never mind. <laughs> It's like like the the biggest like cold water on the crotch that you could possibly <laughs> deliver for music, cold. you know. I'm gonna use that term from now on. Cold water <laughs> on the crotch. I love that. And yes, the virtuosity soundtrack was fantastic too. And that is a fantastic movie. And mm -hmm. yeah, I mean Russell Crowe was in a lot of what's considered B films. But they were good. They were good. The fact that it was him and Denzel Washington squaring off against each other, I don't understand why Virtuosity didn't get a bigger shout out. And I think it's just because it was sci-fi in the 90s and everybody shits on sci-fi. It's mm -hmm. it, you know, unless it's like something like Solaris or 2001. That's a really good it's cyberpunk noir is the best way I can describe virtuosity. Because you have a detective hunting down a killer. It's such a good movie. Like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Just, it's really good and people should watch it. Yes. Welcome to Death TV. What was that? <laughs> that was, I actually believe that was Virtuosity. Oh, okay. That's when cool. Russell Crowe's character uh, took over the club and stole the guy's pimp suit and started wearing it. <laughs> do you guys remember that he stole the the guy's crying on the news he stole my clothes it was like a fucking pimp suit it was purple oh that's hilarious <laughs> it's a, i'm sorry that's such a good fucking movie i want to watch it again i i've gotten to the point where i never want to watch anything that comes out now i just want to watch my old oh, shit my God. yeah you know, i agree I, I don't mind i i've been craving finding new shit but in you know scouring the various um services that we have access to if it's made from 2015 or sooner i don't want it so i, I just don't pay attention to it maybe it's because we're all drunk right now and we were talking about titty tv yeah is that what we were gonna call it the, yes you know, tit tv tit -titty tv tit -titty tales TV. from the stacks we were gonna call it tales yeah. from, that was cat's idea tales from the stacks <laughs> So what was it like when you realized, hey, wait a minute, I got big tits. I was 12 <laughs> and my dad had made a comment and I was like, I basically, I'm going to have to kill the men that come sniffing around you. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> really? That was, that was it? My dad said that he would steal a piece of my boyfriend's clothing and beat the Rottweiler with it. So the Rottweiler <laughs> would attack my boyfriend when they show up <laughs> in the house. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> it's like I never wanted to bring a boyfriend over. I thought they were going to die. No, no, you don't understand. My dad will steal your underwear and beat my dog with it. Okay, there's a short story I, I've been dying to write. And it's one of those time things that once again, until fucking Boobs of Steel is done, I, I can't do it. And it's based on a true life experience. He says as he takes a drink. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get myself even more drunk. Okay. You give me a weird look. No. No, no, it's for content. <laughs> it's for content. Because <laughs> I know the audience wants to hear me get drunk. <laughs> I am doing this for the show. You're making this sacrifices sacrifice. of your liver for the show. So, well, shit, if that's what we're doing, I'll be back. Oh, what, you want more? No, no, no. Oh, do you have more of uh, that? No, this is, this is dead. Oh, are you getting whiskey? Yes. Oh, holy shit. Oh. 
Uh, are you sure you want to do that? Yes. Oh, okay. I'm Irish. I can handle it. You've had a bad day, huh? Yes. Well, I'll wait for Kat it. to come back for that. <laughs> I'm Irish. I can handle it. Holy shit. Well, as I wait for Kat to come back, you know, I will catch her just like sitting there fondling herself. <laughs> She'll like be sitting at her desk working and just like one hand's on the keyboard and the other's just kind of squeezing. I actually still check myself like way and I'm like, okay, how am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like I try not to have pride, but honestly, a point of pride for me is my breasts. Like hey, that has not? always been like the thing that all guys noticed and the, you know, my husband fucking loves them. And I'm always like, dude, you can have as much access as you want, man. They're yours. Like, unless I have the flu or something, please, like you're allowed to grope me in the house. I don't care as long or also like if Chris is in the room or Chris walks by, don't embarrass him. I, I could just see Chris being like, what the fuck? Well, you know, um, depending on the situation, there's quite a few times that cats can't had to kind of, you know, pull my hand away and said, we're in public. <laughs> oh, you me? Yeah. Okay, cat, hit your whiskey. Okay. Cat's back. Kung pie. <laughs> Kung pie. Well, no, that's whiskey. So it'd be. Um, Cheers, what? mate. Cheers, mate. <laughs> May the road rise, rise with you. Uh, Something like that, yeah. Uh, uh, don't let the fairies take you. <laughs> yeah, don't let the fairies take you. <laughs> Fuck the queen. <laughs> Fuck the queen. There you that, go. That'd be another uh, Irish uh, drinking chair uh, toast. <laughs> Bring Shouldn't be just contact the queen. It should be fuck the monarchy. Period. Mm -hmm. Okay, man, that actually smells pretty good. I can smell it from here. Want to taste? No, that's better not. Wow, that's sweet. Okay, so anyway, when I was a teenager, one of the very first girls I sort of dated. I mean, I dated her, but it didn't last very long. The Celeste? Oh, no, no, that was in college. Oh, okay. No, I, I'm talking like junior in high school. Um, I, I dated this girl, and we didn't have a whole hell of a lot in common, but she was very, very sweet and very nice and had big titties. And... Um, Man, if, if I had known what, what she was looking for, I, I, I would have probably been in a different situation. But anyway, there was a gathering at her house, and she had all these people there. And as the party's going on, I noticed um, they're all kind of going away. They're all leaving. Mm -hmm. And eventually, it's just the two of us. Now, earlier that night, before it was just the two of us, uh, her dad gave me a tour of this very nice house they had, and he showed me his wall of knives and his beautiful knife collection, and then his wall of revolvers, and he said, you know, my daughter is very important to me, and it's very important that um, the young man who's with my daughter be very respectful around her and understand that she is a young woman and that a young woman ought to be respected. Now, I've got an awful lot of revolvers, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> so that night, eventually all the other people at the party leave and it's just me and her. And I'm like, wait, she told them all to leave. And there she is leaning forward letting them letting me getting a nice view right down that shirt and her laying her head in my lap going oh it's so warm in here and oh why don't you come a little closer and you know, doing all the things to uh, lure me forward and you know, just accidentally getting me closer and closer to her nice bits and boy, did I want to grab those titties. But then I just kept thinking about her cowboy dad and that big wall of knives and revolvers. <laughs> dad, uh, dad earned his, uh, his uh, dad medal that day. <laughs> Man, I wanted to grab those tits. <laughs> you know, 
as a, I don't know about you, Kat, but I knew that I had a keeper when instead of threatening and intimidating my boyfriends, my dad made a gourmet dinner for Steve the first time he met him. Wow. Yeah. Everybody else had been threatened, but somehow Steve got a gourmet fucking meal. So yeah, none of my other boyfriends had food made for them, but my dad even went out and bought Steve's favorite alcohol. Wow. Yeah. And this led to the whole, this is so stereotypical. So whenever Steve and I would get in an argument, my dad always took Steve's side. <laughs> if Steve, so Steve uh, said that he loved cheesecake. My dad, is that cat? Yes. Oh my God, you are so fucking hot. <laughs> this <laughs> you was really you are. at what? 22? Um, well, that says 2010. So, no, I was uh, thir- uh, 28. 28. Yeah, I was 28 because I turned 30 in 2012. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's a gorgeous piece of art. <laughs> Thank no, you. For real, I'm not trying to blow sunshine up your ass. That's actually a very gorgeous piece of art. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. You know, actually, come to think, of your tits are bigger now, though. Yeah, they are. They they hadn't stopped growing. Well, but you were 28 there. Yeah, but they still kept growing. They kept growing into my 30s. And they claim that I'm doesn't happen. I'm a freak. That no, is my wedding freak. corset. You wore a corset at your wedding? That's awesome. Yeah, yeah I had a, uh, a custom corset made by a professional corseteer. You know, I got another art piece of cat. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. She's the phoenix. That was the idea. Yeah. Yeah, she's straight up the phoenix. <laughs> That's Jean Grey right there. That's canon now. I, I will accept Jean Grey as, as the Phoenix. So Jean Grey on her own, uh, no, I, I do not like that character, to put it mildly. I, I, like, I can say harsher words, but I am sober enough to be able to censor why myself. Do you, why do you always kind of turn red when I show this one? Uh, honestly, I'm muffin topping. Well, it just shows that you're too much woman for, for, for the top. Yeah, but even though I understand that that is a uh, fetish, I, I, I don't like muffin topping. All right. But it's a fetish, so, you know, hey, you know, to each their own. <laughs> I I can I can understand that there's a place for it. See, see Dominic Powell likes it. Well, thank see? you, Dominic. <laughs> All right, hold on. I will be right back. I got to go refill my drink, so I'll be quick like a bunny. Okay. okay. Oh. Bunny. Little rabbit. <laughs> Sorry. So, so how are you feeling now that you've had uh, a shot of wine and a shot of whiskey? I'm finally feeling it. You're finally feeling it. I wasn't feeling it before. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Say something lewd and perverse. Um, Penis. <laughs> That's not very creative. Well, you got to set me up if you want me to say something lewd. You know, you got to fluff me, buddy. I've got to fluff you. You got to fluff me. You know, you, you can't go uh, in all roughshod. All roughshod. You know? <laughs> I have no there idea. you go. How is that? Yeah, that, that there we go. <laughs> so what do you guys want? You want more cat pics? Do you want uh, other women's titties? What do you want? Since this is going to be the topic here. <laughs> what? Wow, it hit me. It just, it really just hit hard. you now. It sta- it hey, let's stand hit, up real fast. <laughs> stand up real fast so it hits you harder. Actually, that made it go away. That made it go. Fuck. <laughs> Sit your ass down. I told you. I'm from good Irish stock. <laughs> Half Irish, though. Yeah, but I've got German mixed in. Yeah, that's true. I'm from good drinking stock. How about that? Grimlock wants to you know, know what muffin topping is. Uh, muffin topping is where the boobage spills over the top of your top like a muffin. <laughs> Sorry, I can't be more eloquent than that. It's just if you if you've seen muffins and how when they bake they spill over, just think that, but with boobs. You know, and it's really disturbing when it's stomach fat. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's very disturbing. Or when it's butt fat. You know, I didn't <laughs> know what a front butt was till you explained to me. And then you showed me. And I could never unsee it. 
can never unsee the front butt. <laughs> and, you know, there is a fetish for that where they have the, the person, male or female, there's both, we don't judge, wear a thong for their front butt. <laughs> So you get front butt. I'll crack. fucking judge male or female. It's disgusting. <laughs> front butt floss. <laughs> Fuck that. Butt, butt, butt floss? Huh? Yes. Front, <laughs> front butt floss. There. Okay. There. That's when you stop growing. <laughs> yeah. That's what I stopped finally growing. I was 35. She was, she was very happy about this. What? That, you know, that Kat day? is one of those people that's going to look perpetually 20 for like another decade. Well, oh, yeah, you. that's because yeah. in her 20s, she looked 12. And boy, was that uncomfortable for me. You're, you're, he's not joking. No, no, that was really joking. uncomfortable for me. No, no, I, I was saying, like, I can only imagine how very yeah, I, awkward that was. I had adults thinking I was 12 until I was 24. And yeah, it's like, God fucking damn it. I actually had to have, you know, it, it's bad. It, it, it getting carded is fine, except when it's not to buy alcohol, it's to, you know, go into a movie theater. <laughs> that sucks. You know what, though? My sister in law was the same way. I'll never forget. We were at an event and she was talking to her sons. And this woman said, How old are you? And she was so pissed. She was just like, Old enough. And the woman tried to backtrack. But it was it was so rude because she thought my sister in law was like twelve years old. Oh my god! And my sister in law was just like, "No, I'm a grown woman, and these are my kids, and you need to back the fuck up." Shit. Neo Star, isn't a pangolin an animal? Yes, pangolins are awesome. They're the closest thing we'll get to dragons. Yeah, they okay. will claw through concrete. I love that video of them clawing through the concrete of the building. Yes. It's amazing. Pangolins are so cool. Well, unfortunately, um, pangolin scales are on the market now, just like rhino horns for the exact same reason. Oh, uh, just like, I think it's also tiger testicles too, right? Yeah. Yeah. I really hate that shit. It really makes me mad. I'm with you. Like, I I'm not much Oh. <laughs> Okay, I'm not much of an environmentalist, but stuff like that pisses me off. So I I walked out to get my drink, and Chris could hear us laughing. And he walks up to me. He's like, Mom, have you guys made of made fun of environmentalists yet? Because you need to make fun of environmentalists. <laughs> Most random <laughs> shit I've ever heard. Right now, Your he's on a kick. so adorable. Oh, talk, on, have him talk to me. I'll give him plenty of reasons to make fun of them. They do oh, more watches... damage than they help. Yeah, he apparently. needs a nuke the whale shirt. <laughs> well, you guys are going to love this. So apparently while Steve and Chris were out grocery shopping today, Steve was fucking with Chris and taking the side of a flat earther. And they get up to the checkout at Costco. And Steve's just, you know, spewing out bullshit just to, to tease Chris. And Chris was just, go he got visibly mad, I guess, about my husband defending flat earthers. Obviously, it was a joke. And the people at Costco were like, yeah, you tell your dad. Yeah, there's no such thing as flat earth. I think the first time he met Chris, he said flat earthers are stupid. He's still on that. <laughs> is he? Yes. He can't stand flat earthers. It drives him batshit. That's great. It's like, no, 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 no. You can't sail too far because you'll fall off the edge of the earth, dude. <laughs> no, 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 no. See... Then there's that weird breed of flat earthers, and I'm not kidding, who actually think that we're living on the inside of the globe. Oh, oh my fucking Christ. Really? Yeah. So is that uh, glow-in-the-dark lichen on the, the ceiling of the big-ass cave? Oh, right no. It's some sort of yeah. weird potentiality sitting at the Earth's center that yeah. we think is the sun. But it's not, and it actually eclipses the sun, and that's why we think it's At the night. beginning of the film, The Mole People, you get a great explanation of what it is. Yeah, you actually do. The, the old Mole People movie from the 50s. Which I still contend is a good film. But Yeah, it is a good film, it, and it's odd because um, it, they had to change the ending so that the, uh, the female um, lead dies because apparently our hero marrying a blonde 
blonde haired, blue eyed woman is considered a uh, was it uh, mixing races? Well, because she was Sumerian, but she's blonde. Yeah. What movie is this? I Mole need to people watch. with John Agar. I you remember when uh, Nicole that got movie. all weirded out when I was we'll like, have "No, to, we'll look, have to show it to look, you." That's an actual good film, really seriously. Yeah, it is a good film. It actually is a good film, and it has some really good commentary about racism, honestly. Um, and I'm not one to uh, promote that shit, but this movie was really good about it. Um, and it's got uh, um, the actor who played uh, Alfred in the 1960s Batman show as an evil priest. Oh, hell yeah. Okay, I'll watch. That sounds yeah. fun. It's great. I like it, old school sci-fi. Oh, you'll love this film. You'll absolutely love this film. And ju just John Agar. Nobody chews the scenery like John Agar. I mean, seriously. He's he's a master at the smarm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, hey, so. Oh, wait, yeah? real quick. Retneck, um, I play as a filthy casual in Elder Scrolls Online. If you play Xbox... My uh, gamer tag is the same as my Discord tag. Hit me up because literally I'm just a filthy casual running around. I'm not in a guild or anything. I know that there's a lot of psychos online, but dude, I'll play with you. That's no problem. Hey, so so what was it like for you when you finally realized your mom was full of shit and you weren't a bee cup? For me? No, I'm talking to Kat. Oh, oh okay. I was like, wait. Because Kat's mom <laughs> kept swearing, no, you're a bee cup. No, no, I'm only buying you B cups because you're a B cup. That sounds um, like projection. Yeah, quite frankly, it was uh, actually it wasn't. Um, you know, I'm I'm free to be me or any of that other crap. It was finally, damn, I have a bra that fits. <laughs> no, really, that that was the uh, the absolute shocker. Was just that that like wow, I have a bra that fits and it's comfy and just just relishing that fact i have a bra that uh doesn't like punch its time card after six hours you know even though i still have to wear it for two more hours because i'm still at work i that is the worst feeling in the world is when like your bra suddenly gets to that point where it's like okay it is now super uncomfortable i need to take this thing off now and you can't <laughs> Okay, so we're trying to, to get as much mileage as we can out of Tatas here. Okay. Uh, what pair of Tatas -ta -ta would you want to bury your face into? Other no than way. your own. Who? Oh, damn no it, because my answer was going to be my own. <laughs> <laughs> I want Noi. Well, Kat does <gasps> bury your face into her own. Yeah, I can, actually. I can motorboat myself. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, no, it's See, pretty I funny. can't do that. I don't have that <laughs> skill. Uh, because cats actually like double my size, which I mean that's that's a fucking feat. Cats I, are double H. <laughs> okay, but you're taller yeah. than her. I am taller than her, but my breasts are smaller. But I I remember are you they? and I were talking at the beginning of boobs of steel, and I they only ever had double D's for me, but I still spill over. So I'm probably an E or an F. In fact, it's gotten to the point where Steve buys my bras for me, just you, like you did. You're I thought you were a G. You're at least a double F. I honestly thought, thought you were a G. I'm probably like, um, I've gotten to the point right now where I wear only sports bras because that's the only thing that can contain my boobage, where which I'm fine with actually. That can contain your boobage. I, I have a shit of a time finding them. Like the one pair I have are mm -hmm. like freaking armor plating and that's not an exaggeration. You know, I'll find out where my husband looks for my bras because he's now he's the one that buys my bras for me because I get so frustrated. I'm just like, I want to touch the computer screen. <laughs> he does so that for he, me. I know. I You know what? We have good husbands, don't we? We do. We have wonderful yes. husbands. So he buys all my bras for me. Like he'll come and like bring out the, the loose tape measure that you use What's for fun? like when you're doing clothes and he'll measure me yeah. because if I do it, I will punch the computer screen. It's Is so it frustrating. Bras you pick? No, I like Gaia and uh, another one that starts with a G. Freya? Blake. I know you do Freya, Freya too, right? Freya is good. Freya is who my sports bra came from. And again, that thing is freaking armor plating. But yeah, you want to go Polish. Polish bras are good. It's because Eastern European women are stacked. I mean, they really are. They have really nice breasts. Mm -hmm. 
Um, that and uh, Polish bras are all handmade. Oh, are they really? Yeah, they're all handmade. So one day I'm going to go to Poland. One day I'm going to go to Eastern Europe and just marvel at the boobs. This this is a Polish woman. <laughs> There's a reason Holy Polish shit. bras are so damn good. This she, is Poland Britney Spears. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? She is or was their top pop star. Yeah. We we need to do a field trip to Poland. Yes. That would be fun. I am so there. Her name is Ua Sonnet, and um Kat and I have already made an agreement. If there was ever the opportunity for a grope, yeah. We would oh, both I, do I, it. I'd free some on her. Oh yeah. I'd totally free some on her. I mean, um, yeah, yes. Uh I mean, this woman's a goddess. I mean, look at this woman. I love her boobs, and you're going to laugh. This is the girly part of me. I really want her polka dot stilettos. <laughs> you know what? Those are pretty badass. For as much as I do a lot of tomboy stuff, I'm still so very girly. I still buy dresses, and I buy florals. <laughs> there, I love my there florals. Is a, there is a place for the girly stuff. I mean, like, the other day, I went nuts, and I bought a bunch of lipstick. I don't wear lipstick, but I bought it. That's the truth. I want to do a makeup day with you. I think yeah. you and I would have a blast because yes. I. I so want you to do the '40s makeup on hers, just so I at least once can see her done up like a dame. I need that red color, though. I don't have any of that red color because I look like a whore in it. Oh, uh, we have all a ton want Mako from reds. Prison School Wolf. We mm. all want want Mako to spank us. I haven't seen prison school yet, guys. Like, I, I'm catching up on so much right now. I'm sorry. And I haven't, I, so many people want me to watch prison school. And I'm like, but I'm trying to catch up on Hunter Hunter and Bastard got re released. And there's so many big tittied anime girls and Bastard. I have to make a correction. Last week, I got Bastard and Berserk confused. So uh, oh. somebody actually called me on it. And I thank that person. I don't remember who you are. So Both are um, very good. Neo Star, Ireland is a very interesting case, and sadly, because of stupid EU politics, I think the last real legacy of Irish culture is going to be the United States. But I got to say, there's something very interesting about gingers, and I'm, uh, this is just interesting. Apparently, those who like gingers, the way they're wired, really, really like gingers. And it's kind of this, it really, it's a mental wiring. And if you're not wired to like gingers, then you really, really don't like them. It's really kind of interesting. It's either you're into the fetish or you And it does seem to be not. in some sort of brain wiring is it, that you're either you just, you see a ginger girl and you're just totally into her. And a lot of features that people wouldn't find attractive, you will. Okay. You know who I find really hot, but she's, you know, she's, Considering the role she plays, she also plays crazy really well. But it's like I don't care; she's hot. The uh, uh, woman from um, Tokyo Gore Police. Oh uh, God, E.G. Yeah, from is she uh, the main character, the one that uh, was fighting everybody? Yeah. Yes. Okay, uh, I haven't seen that movie in years, but I just remember her. And the slave with the um, arms and legs that had blades that were kind of from uh, Violence Jack. Yes. That's uh, Ishishina. And yes, she she is a very attractive woman. Well, just her in, um, God, what is the film? Uh, there it is. Tokyo it's, Gore Police is actually one of my favorite films. What it's is the name of that film? film? I'm blanking on the word. Audition. Audition. And, and I'm forgiving her, you because you're drunk. Yeah. Her in Audition is just um. I don't care that you're crazy. Just fuck me. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. That's the same chick? Yeah, that's her. Oh, my God. I didn't. Oh, I never put two and two together because it's so two underrated. different characters. Yeah, she's amazing. She's a really Holy good actress. but She's, she's really fucking bad. hot. Apparently, like, she made her fortune in France as a model because she looks, uh, as they put it, weird. <laughs> she looks weird. She's actually well, well, from when French. I saw her in an audition way long time ago and Tokyo Gore Police, she's gorgeous. Oh, uh, they're French, you know. They have their own aesthetic. <laughs> oh, God, don't get me started on the French. <laughs> I've done some, like, studies. Like, not studies, but studying history. The French are so crazy. Like, 
something's not right there. <laughs> no, 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 there there is nothing right there. Quite frankly, es especially in Paris. Like you look at Paris, and then you look at the rest of France, and you're like, the rest of France can be crazy, but holy fuck, look at Paris. What the hell is wrong with them? They um they've been sniffing sniff, uh, sniffing their own farts for the past two hundred years. So <laughs> I don't think they've just been sniffing their farts. They've been making ass hash and sniffing yes. that. Ass hash. <laughs> that that Bill is house huffing. <laughs> that is inspired. If anybody wants to be grossed out or traumatized, look up ass hash. <laughs> ass hash. Is that real? Wow. Yes, am, that is real. You're not People get high this, off the methane the in their own ass hash in prison. Wow. Although for some reason that makes me think of when uh, Steve-O shaved his pubes and then smoked it in a bomb. Oh, that's an old gag. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's nothing new. That that was like a gag stoners would pull on it. Yeah, other. but it's Steve-O. You guys want to hear a funny pube story? It's not mine. My dad told it to me. But I, it'll sure. make you laugh. Yes, tell us about your dad's pubes. Oh, no, it has nothing to do with my dad's pubes. So when I was born... Um... Oh, but I want to hear about your dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just yeah, they all enra hear about enraptured it. with the idea of your dad's pubes. <laughs> well, no, this has nothing to do with my dad's pubes, but his friend's pubes. So when I was born, they took my dad out to go drinking and he went to the bathroom and he came back and he drank his beer and all the guys had ripped out their pubes and put them at the bottom of his beer and he like fucking puked all over the table. Ah. <laughs> Wow. I, why awesome. can't we be like that anymore? I want people yeah. to rip out their fucking pubes and put it in their friend's beer. I told you about the time of the toilet plunger, right? May, it, I, you probably did. I told you a story before, but I'll tell it again. This is, again, another one of those. See, Gen X was fucked up stories. And that was everybody in the room. We were at this guy's apartment, him and his wife, and Everyone but me is plowed out of their fucking mind. I mean, they are drunk as shit. And this dude named Josh Kennedy wanders off to the bathroom. And keep in mind, everyone's drunk, so nobody's really much thinking about it. And everyone's like, you know, he's been gone for a long time. And they go in and they realize he's thoroughly passed out. And... Um, yeah, he's passed out and his head is hanging over the toilet. <laughs> Shit. So they drag him out, right? And he's like, <laughs> and they get the video camera. They turn it on. And first they start plunging his, they pull his shirt up and start plunging his stomach with the toilet plunger. <laughs> okay. And he just starts going. <laughs> Having no idea what's going on. And then after that, they take the toilet brush and they start brushing his teeth. Oh, God. And they videotape it. Now the punchline. As he says before he takes a drink. Look, if I'm going to get drunk and entertain the audience, I should go all the way. Nothing, no half measures. I haven't done this in ages. Yes, that's right. Go all the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the next morning everyone wakes up and they say dude we got a video to show you you gotta see this and they show him the video of them plunging his toilet or plunging plunging his stomach with the toilet plunger and rubbing his teeth with the toilet brush he starts laughing his ass off <laughs> he's not mad he's not offended he thinks it's hilarious because he's still drunk <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, horrible. Oh, no. We didn't draw dicks on your face and trace around them. <laughs> I did that a lot. I would draw in permanent marker dicks and pentagrams on people's faces when they'd pass out. Those are my favorite hobbies. <laughs> I was yeah. kind of a dick. <laughs> I, I suppose, you know, I should feel like I missed out that my friends and I never did that, but we would play RPGs till like 5 a.m. 
and then uh, watch for dawn while uh, reruns of uh, She Wolf of London ran on the no, side no, channel. No, 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 no. <laughs> you would get all hopped up on Jolt and Red Bull, and then you guys would go outside with foam stores. No, 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 sir. We did not hit Red Bull. We hit Andrew Jolt. did. Well, that's Andrew. That's Andrew because he thought it was made with real bull semen. <laughs> oh I wish I was joking. No, no, no. We oh did jolt God. and we did surge. That was it. But no. Andrew Andrew drank the Red Bull. Andrew drank the Red Bull because he seriously thought that it was made out of bull semen. And then you guys oh would go God. outside with full swords and start bashing each other over the head. That is true. We would go out into the park and we'd do that until the cops were called. You know, one time we had the cops called on us because we were running down the street with a homeless person's shopping cart. <laughs> 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 well, this was Scripps Ranch. There were no homeless people. Okay, this was SDSU at the intersection of College and Montezuma, where like it gets oh, ghetto. Oh shit! <laughs> we were oh, coming from area. the liquor store, and we found a homeless person's cart, and we ran down the street with them. And it was so loud, it pissed off the neighbors, so they called the cops on us. <laughs> And we wow. had to sit on the curb as they checked her IDs. And we had this poor homeless person's cart with all their shit in it. Oh, no. Gen X behaving badly. Gen X behaving yes. badly. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, behaving God. badly. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. I just, I just, I just re remember. It. Oh, I'm I sorry. I was gonna say I had just turned twenty one like a month earlier, and they're like, "So you just turned twenty one, and you're already doing this?" I was like, "Yeah, can't." <laughs> Did you ever get no. caught like like going a little too far physically in public? I'm not oh. even talking full on sex, but you know, it's a little too much. No, we were those assholes that like climbed up all the like Museum of History and Mankind buildings and like the, the security be called on us <laughs> because we were being bad in Bubble Park. We did try to tip our friend who had diarrhea and <laughs> went into a porta potty at Bubble Park. <laughs> and we tried to tip him and somehow he was able to counterweight it. We tried so fucking hard. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> And then no. we stole, like, <laughs> we were just stealing shit around the park that we weren't supposed to. <laughs> wow. I miss being in the 90s. The 90s were great. You could do so much stupid shit. And they you didn't could. have videos to record you. You could do so much stupid shit back then. It was awesome. I know. <laughs> Well, I don't know. Even the camera was kind of a challenge. Like, then you're like, okay, what can I do in front of this camera well, to be offensive? Not only that, but like 90% of the time, the cameras were either placed in places where that were useless or um, they weren't even on. And it was uh, the whole trick of figuring out which cameras were actually real and which ones were not. Because of how many places would just cheap out and like put the housing up there. <laughs> Wait, were we supposed to do a Gen X behaving badly show eventually? Like another one? I know we were. We'll, we'll, we'll do that. We'll do that. We got. You know, the guy that got we... his stomach plunged and his teeth brushed with a, to with a uh, toilet uh, brush also decided that he was. This was the guy that decided he would write on his roof during Christmas, land here, Satan. <laughs> <laughs> hey, That's right pretty next. awesome. The guy that we were trying to tip that had diarrhea was a huge dickhead. Like, I mean, one of the worst people I've ever met. So, yes, we were trying to tip his ass because he deserved to be covered in chemical shit and urine. <laughs> the same. The guy was a fucking asshole. Like, I, yeah. So, yeah. sometimes assholes need to be put in their place. But he was tubby enough to be able to do a counterweight on us. And we were all intoxicated. So, we probably didn't have much strength. But the guy was a douchebag. Oh, my God. If a girl didn't go out with him, he would, like, whine about it and cry like he was a victim because he couldn't have sex. Fuck him. Wow. I'm, my, like, I'm really shit-faced. This is great. <laughs> no, I just... 
one of my my biggest memories from Balboa Park, and it might not be a big deal to other people, but that's okay, was um, this was the day after Ishii and I had been in a horrible car accident where our car spun out of, you know, like, like we had been sideswiped. So we spun around three times and then flipped three times and nearly rolled off a cliff. Um, this was right before... Um, uh shit what's that it was it manchester manchester on the five mm -hmm. um that's where we had our accident and so you know that was a that was a harrowing experience um and the next day he was sleeping it off which was good me i couldn't sleep a wink and some good friends of ours were very kind and they're like hey we're going to balboa park why don't you come with us and i'm like yes i want to get out of the house i'm not driving this is great <laughs> and um uh, I just remember sitting in the park, enjoying the sunshine, kind of in a daze. And it's like, wow, this is great. You know what? You know, this really is the first day of the rest of my life. I'm going to go to the to the Japanese garden. I'm going to get some tea. Because <laughs> <laughs> I never would buy tea from there because it was always horribly overpriced. But it was just, damn it, I'm going to get some tea. <laughs> I let's see one time I went there because I was just horribly hungry but I just wanted Japanese food and I was hoping for the best that they would have some onigiri that wasn't slimy oh, and was it, it was still slimy oh so sad Marakai go to Marakai no I just need to yeah I need to just go to little Tokyo whenever oh. I'm yeah I miss Marakai I miss Marakai so much there's no good Japanese food here <laughs> there is but it's really expensive yeah that it is it's really expensive i i very much so miss being able to go to marakai after work and just get a rice bowl <laughs> you sound like my uh niece and her husband because they live in the claremont area so they just live off japanese food Ah, uh, i miss that so <laughs> fucking much <laughs> i miss that too but that's why i have a cookbook so i'm too poor <laughs> no that's fair i mean i have so i have a cookbook too but it's just i come home and it's like I don't want to put forth the effort. I just throw shit into my hot pot and turn it on. <laughs> right? Wolf says that he can only take our word for it on the 90s shenanigans. Wolf, mm. it happened. Trust me. The it 90s, happened. people were fucking crazy. Between the 80s and the 90s, people were out of their fucking minds. Yes, yes, they were. In fact, was... anything that you find on online to show you what it was like, it was like more than. <laughs> well, uh, no, no, that isn't fair because, you know, a lot of the shit you find online is being done for attention, not out of stupidity. No, I mean the stuff from the 90s. Like oh. the uh, Faces of Death videos and stuff. Yeah. Like... Oh, I saw, <laughs> I saw Faces of Death for the first time while in the Museum of Death. And really? Yeah, and the Museum of Death, I don't know what it's like now, now that it's moved to Los Angeles, but when I went, it was great. But um, I don't know if I'm proud or not by the fact that I stayed watching, you know, I stayed in that museum the longest out of the party that we went to. I mean, everybody was waiting for me to get out in order to leave. Um, and I really don't know if I'm proud about that or not. But um, their exhibit on um, Ed Gein and uh, their exhibit on, oh, they had another exhibit. Oh, the couple who um, vivisected a guy and were posing with his body parts in various suggested Which ways one? naked. <laughs> There's multiple couples that did that, like um, Bonnie and Clyde. This was in the 70s. Oh, yeah. Okay. And they, the they, Brits? Yeah, they were Brits. They yeah, were, yeah, I know and, you're talking and about. you know, they, they don't pull punches. You see both of them totally naked with these various body parts being used in ways that body parts should not be used in. Um, and it, it really, it just got to the point where it's just, I'm more fascinated by the psychology that goes into this shit. <laughs> And uh, I probably look shell shocked for the next 24 hours afterwards because my mom just left me alone to whittle wood on the back patio for the rest of the day. Oh. <laughs> I, hey, I made my wizard staff that day. That's awesome. <laughs>
Okay, uh, Wolf Wolf believes us. Okay. I was going to say, no, wait, we really did this shit. Just, yeah, people, I think, videotape things more often, but people aren't as, uh, we have more of a caution to the wind, I think. Well, it attitude. wasn't done for attention. No. no, it was just done for shits and giggles. Like I think yeah, we were very nihilistic. <laughs> well, it was the, uh, well, I'm going to die tomorrow. I might as well. <laughs> I mean, you were faking, like, mental disabilities to get, like, views and, and money. No. Yeah. Like these fucktards pretending to have Tourette's and shit. That makes me so mad because I see people who pretend to have autism and I fucking lose it. I, hate I that can shit. only imagine... I mean, I can only imagine what you go through. I mean, quite frankly, now, I, it, it's not the, if the kids they are showing are real, I feel really bad for the kids. These commercials I've been seeing of um, boys with autism, quite frankly, piss me off because the way that they've been showing these kids, it's like it's this crippling disability and that uh, these you know, they might as well be showing, and I, I don't mean any disrespect to anybody who may have family members who don't have this, but it's like they're showing kids with Down syndrome. And yes. and it uh, that's actually why it pisses me off is because it's, it's depicting autism like Down syndrome, and they are two completely different things. <laughs> that's something that pisses me off. Like, you know, there's, there's levels to being autistic. Uh, mm -hmm. I know a lot of autistic people don't like the labels high functioning, medium function, or moderate functioning and low functioning. Um, but there are many levels. And even those who are low functioning, people say they're intellectually disabled. They're not. They've actually done studies that showed that even though they're nonverbal, they're fucking memorizing everything. Yeah. So if they ever became verbal, holy shit. Like they would be a walking computer. The, the so, thing yeah. I don't get is this, this desire to be validated. My identity isn't being validated. Well, fuck your identity. You know, Seriously, honestly, who the fuck cares who you are? Chris has said on some occasions he prefers that he wasn't autistic. And I think like part of that is because he's like, I'm just being identified of, as autistic, not as Christopher, as his personality. Um, so I understand where that can piss him off. Now, um, I honestly think even if he wasn't autistic, he'd be super smart because um, and I'm going to do a little bragging here, guys. So forgive me. Uh, Steve's grandfather was invited to Mensa and so was my dad. So he's got the intelligence no matter what. And we're pretty sure that um, my husband, Steve, would have been invited to Mensa too, but he hates Mensa. Well, I don't want to say he hates Mensa. <laughs> They're kind of dorks. Yeah. He's well, just like, why the fuck should I have to take a test and be like, ooh, yeah, I'm like one of the most intelligent people in the world. Well, that in the San Diego chapter are a bunch of jailbait chasers. Oh, that's fucking gross. Yeah. See, that's one reason I don't have Chris do the test. Plus, you know what? Like, I don't need him to have that pressure because what if he's not a good tester? I know that he can do tests well, but what if he can't do that test and all of a sudden he's going to think he's an idiot? It's like, no, you don't no, need Mensa's need permission. That. No, he doesn't. Yeah. I mean, I, I compare. We know he's intelligent. I I compare to that, that club where the guy's it's what is it the big penis club where a person will actually come over and measure them and yeah. give them a card that says whether or not they actually qualify as having a big penis it's like who the fuck cares if it works it works who cares that's my my opinion on it yeah oh shit. can you guys excuse me for just one second i'll be right back how you doing cat so I'm pretty good. You getting a little toasty? Yeah, I'm uh I am right at the point of uh oh maybe I'm a little more sauced than than I would normally like, well, but that's not, okay. I'm well, we need to get you a little people. more offensive. You need me to be a little more sexual? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you almost said sexual. <laughs> Either way. You want it, me more sexual? <laughs> That'll be more offensive, right? Yeah, I mean, really, seriously. It's just well, what 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 uh, what naughty things do you want me to say? Um, well, you're more perverse than I am. Well, uh, you ask me to give you a prompt. What? Well, yeah, you gotta fluff me. You've gotta. 
I've got to fluff you. Yeah, you got to fluff me. Women don't need to be fluffed. I'm not women. Oh. I'm me. You're 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 you. I'm the cat and you have to pet me. Are you sure you're not the captain? <laughs> <laughs> I could be the captain. <laughs> I don't but I don't like the captain. I don't like rum. You're not the captain of the HMS Titty 4. No, no, I'm the fucking admiral, motherfucker. You're the admiral. I'm okay. the admiral. The HSM titty, is that what I just yes. heard? Yes. Sorry, I had to. I heard coughing, and I thought it was my mom. It turned out it was just the TV, so we're okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. I'm glad that uh, you checked on her. She's she's doing better, right? Much better. Well, she's physically wrecked because of everything that happened. This woman is still sassy. She still talks shit. Good. So I know she's okay. When she talks shit to me, I'm like, okay, you're fine. <laughs> oh, well, God. well, out of all fairness, and this has nothing to do with what we were talking about, your mom. I'm very sorry. I'm drunk. No, uh, be, be fine. You're fine. You're fine. Okay. I, I, I realize that maybe the small titty women, the, the audience feel left out. Okay. And little titties are cute. We love little they, ones. They definitely they have their mouth. charm. And, you know, I wouldn't even be this brash and blatant. And I certainly was until, until about five years ago. And it became very clear to me that the world was really anti-titty and girls were cutting their tits off. Which is fucked. I don't yes. care how big they are. Big ones, small ones. They deserve to live, damn it. And as a Gen Xer, it's my duty to say, fuck you, no. I'm going to do what you told me not to do. And that is to say yay to titties. Yes. I mean, I will say multiple times over and over again that titties are good. But again, I've dated absolutely gorgeous women who are C cups and B cups. Okay. They don't all have to be mighty women like my wife. <laughs> Now, now, clearly, she is too mighty for that top. And that, well, I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Look, honestly, all in all, I think all breasts are awesome. From yes. the smallest, like, anybody who thinks that, like, I suck because my breasts are small. No, you don't suck. You get, no. you get advantages that us big-tittied women don't have, which is wearing cute halter tops. Yeah, like that's one thing I I was I I did have jealousy. Yeah. I still have jealousy over it. I see those girls wearing those cute little halter tops. I'm like, I don't have enough boob tape to hold my tits up in one of those. Yeah, and so I'm like, you've got an advantage there. You get to wear a lot more cute tops than us big big boobed women. So yeah, we no. have the big boobs and we can wear the V necks and the scoop necks. But you guys get the really kick-ass halter tops that you get are to wear tops super gorgeous. without a bra. Yeah, there's some days that I wish I could go around without a bra and not like feel like I can feel my my nipples rubbing my knees, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I I think boobs. I know we always talk about big boobs, but you know I like them of all size. I love the small cups. I think they're very adorable. They probably feel just the same. No, actually they don't. Oh, they don't really. No, no, no. Actually, it's very interesting. Um, now, granted, let's see. There were only three small titty girls that I dated. One was very unfortunate, and she was flat as a boy. Now I'm just going to be upfront. That was very disappointing. The other two that were uh, B and C cups. Um, okay, you know water balloons? Yes. How there's the really big balloons and there's the really small balloons. And when you make the small water balloons, you fill them up, they're really firm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they had that sort of a very, very firm texture to them. And there is a very different uh, texture and feeling to them. And it's a very different experience. Interesting. Okay. See, now, they doesn't, it does not have the pillowy, smothering, obey me power of the large-breasted <laughs> woman, but there definitely is a charm to the well-formed, perfectly sculpted, smaller breast. And I hope the woman who, the, the woman I'm primarily talking about isn't listening. Well, you know, I just like them all, honestly. Like, I, one of my favorite things about going to art school was drawing naked women. I know yes. that sounds weird. I, I and, had, and the men. 
The men, yeah. okay, you guys are gonna laugh at me. Th this is where my Christian upbringing comes from. So when uh, a guy would come in, I always felt uncomfortable and not because, oh, it's penis. It's like, oh my God, but I'm already with a man who has a penis and I don't need to see that. Like the first time I had to do that, I called Steve and was like crying on the phone. I saw another man's penis. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of cute though. No, I I yeah, he told me it was okay. He's like, you know what? You're an art student. It's okay. I'm like, yeah, I don't want you to think I'm cheating on you because I saw another man's dick. <laughs> that's cute. And that's cool that uh, that Steve was Well, it's not like it. he slapped you in the face with it or nothing. I mean, come on. It's okay. <laughs> well, there to... were actually some guys that they definitely had some big packages. I was like, wow. <laughs> Oh, God yeah. damn. When I was in art school, yeah, there were some nice guys, but... I, I just, it's like, okay, that's nice. And then I could draw them and it was yeah. fine. The only Holy one, shit, is that an elephant? Well, actually, <laughs> the, the, the one that I had, that I actually turned beet red and I had a hard time drawing him. And so I just wouldn't draw that area. Um, he, it was my first time ever seeing somebody who was uncut. And oh, he wow. was quite well endowed on top of that. So it really did look like an elephant trunk. And I had a hard time not staring. So it's just, I'm not going to draw that part. I'm just going to draw everything else. And there's, there's, there's just blank spots on my figure. Oh, drawing. Everything been. else is well rendered. No, it's, it's the fact that I felt embarrassed that I was just oh, really? staring at it. And because I knew. bothered by that. No, no. I, it actually wasn't because I thought you would be bothered. It was simply me personally. It's like, if I keep staring at it, that's all I'm going to focus on. And that's all I'm going to draw for the entire two hours. <laughs> so yeah. it's like, I got to draw everything but that. <laughs> the, the shade, done. <laughs> I never it's had the there. pleasure of drawing somebody uncircumcised. We never had a model like that. And in hindsight, I wish we did because I would have liked to have least learned how to draw the main male genitalia that way. Not that I would draw porn, mm -hmm. but I... I find it, you know, being able to learn how to draw the different types of bodies. Women are easy. You know, mm -hmm. the biggest difference as we've been talking about is breasts. So you can have a big breasted model or a small breasted model. Same thing with, you know, their butt. You know, you can have a big badonka donk or a tiny one. But with the guys, it really, we never got an uncircumcised male model. And I kind of wish we did because it would have been interesting to learn how to draw the male penis a different way. And like, like I said, this is like me being serious. <laughs> <laughs> no. But yeah, like I still, even if I would have seen an uncircumcised guy, I would have called Steve. Honestly, every time an, a naked male model came in, I called Steve. I was like, I'm sorry. To the point where like he was giggling at me like, oh my gosh, you don't need to be doing this. Okay. Well, again, that's sweet that, uh, that you felt that way and that he was perfectly fine with it. Um, you know, I, I do legitimately miss um, doing figure drawing. I think one of these days I'll go back because um, the, the... Tell your Jim Ballant story. Oh, <laughs> my Jim, Jim Ballant, Ballant, as in Catwoman and Tarot, Jim Ballant. Yeah, yes. tell your tell your Jim Ballant story. I love this story. Um, this was uh, about the first year that uh, Tarot got started up, mm -hmm. and uh, well, it was like a couple of years, but yeah. No, no, it was the first year. If not, it was the second year because it had it hadn't been going for very long, and you and I just started dating, and he dared me to go mess with balance um nicely but uh you know and and uh i i'll i'll be honest i i would feel bad but for balance reaction so um i don't feel bad but anyway um so i went up to balance uh booth at san diego comic-con i'm like you know i love tarot i think it's a great comic um you know, I find her extremely sexy. I absolutely love how hot Crip Chick looks. You know, I'm, I'm just talking up how much I, I love the comic. And I go, but, you know, there's one thing that's really missing with tarot. And that is you don't have anything for the ladies. You know, I, you know, I, 
I need to see some big, powerful schlong. And I showed my fit, you know, my, my forearm and my fist. And you raised it up. And I raised it up. And um, you go, I want some big, powerful schlong. And you pumped your fist in yeah. the air. And <laughs> who I found out later was his wife was sitting next to him. Um, and turned to me and says, you know, Jim, she's right. You do need to have more of that in your comics. I have to set oh all the women. No, well, and, then, and then the other women who I found out later were the model, models for the little kittens. They all turned to him and was like, yeah, Jim, you should do that. Sure oh enough, like four God. months later, there was some big old dick in his comic. <laughs> so good she for Jim. Yeah. He is one artist. I'm sad I never got to meet because the he's first a nice time, guy. He's the first very, time I heard very of nice and very real. Mm -hmm. I've heard he's very chill. The first he, time I heard of Jim Ballant was when they did the interview in Wizard Magazine, and I'm so sad I got rid of it because I would have mailed that to Ishi for Boobs of Steel because Aww. he said the reason he draws his women, <laughs> this is great, his women with big tits is because he had trauma from looking at Dar Dolly Parton when he was a child. <laughs> oh, I rem that on. is the one quote I remember. And Even just his world? no. <laughs> his artwork from Catwoman, like that was really my first introduction to non-Michelle Pfeiffer Catwoman, which I was like, actually, I like his Catwoman better. She wasn't a she was like one of the first anti-heroes of the late 80s, early 90s. It was when Catwoman wore the really awesome purple suit but had the long hair. Yeah. Yeah. It, during, um, oh gosh, it was like the Contagion and No Man's Land storylines for Batman, which I think were some of the best. God, you want to talk about Batman? I think those are some of the best storylines ever. Yeah, um, you know the Batman's got a huge slong. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, dude, it's Batman. Like, he probably outmeasures my favorite DC superhero, Superman. But I, I think Superman's got the strength behind it, so... Mm. <laughs> he better be a man of steel, but not faster than a speeding bullet. Yes. <laughs> anyway, I really like, I can't believe, like, I know hindsight's 2020. It's like, why the fuck did I get rid of that? Because I would just mailed it to you guys and been like, use that book for your book. Yeah. You know, I tried I getting a hold his of the, woman. I tried to get a hold of the dude that does Lady Death. He's local, but he didn't write back to me, nor did Ballant. Lady Death Dude's local? Yeah. Oh, shit. Okay. The guy that, that created why... it? I can't yeah. remember his name right now because I'm shit faced, but he does coffin comics now, right? Yeah. That would explain why he was at uh, uh, Phoenix Fan Fusion. No, what it is about Big Breasts that differentiate is that what it symbolizes. And it really, you know, let's face it, just like uh, you see all the fertility gods have these gigantic dicks and are muscular. It's the hyper-exaggerated feminine features expressing feminine power. It's hot. I mean, what would you expect a goddess to look like that embodies the feminine, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. And the idea that we're trying to push little girls and little boys into abandoning their sexual uh, traits. You know, just realizing is how, criminal. how broken her anatomy is. But, who cares? But who cares? Exactly. I was going to say, I know that her anatomy doesn't match, but the way he's drawn her, I, I like how Ballant drawed Catwomen. And mm -hmm. I like, I didn't know who Jim Ballant really was until you guys told me more about him. And I went and looked up some of his stuff. I'm like, that's classic pinup mashed with 90s counterculture and it's fucking gorgeous and i would love to see more from him just now maybe it's maybe it's because i'm drunk but i'm just gonna say i really miss when quote unquote pornography was beautiful women in lovely poses you know when when it was just, you know, busty women, it was the appreciation of the female form. I mean, to find out now, you know, what's the end thing? Apparently choking? Ew. Is that a, is that a thing? Yes. I mean, I know it's a thing, but, and uh, hell, uh, Archer had lots of jokes about that, but that's now like the end thing in comics? Yeah. Or not in comics, no, in porn. In porn? Ah, well, think about it. When they had choking an archer, it was literally the crazy woman that was Cheryl Carroll. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she was a fucking nut job. And 
by the way, I'm not shaming anybody's kink. If you're into that, no problem. But, but it's not the same. Can be hard. Yeah. But I mean, as far as I'm concerned, and maybe I'm drunk. We're all drunk. But honey. the classic pinup was just another form of goddess worship. We were looking at the the exaggerated female form and appreciating it and seeing, appreciating what it was and what its power represented. And this whole idea of queering of culture, what does that mean? It means perversing, perverting, warping. Why would you want to do that? Why is it everything but normal is okay? I mean, seriously, what is wrong with loving and appreciating a woman for being a woman? And, you know, the thing is, and I know a lot of we women don't understand this. A lot of women think that guys just want the perfect girl. No, actually, that's not true. Men just want women who look like women. It doesn't matter if she's chubby. I've dated chubby women and just thought they were hot as hell. And... I don't know. It's just this idea that we need to eschew all that and reject. Why can't women just be allowed to be female? Why is it that they have to suddenly be, be become men? Because am we I, have a am bunch I making of people, any sense? No, you're making sense. We have a bunch of people who have a fetish that are in pop culture right now, mainstream pop culture. Because when I first started dating Steve, I was still chubby. And he said, I usually don't date women like your body type. And I got really ashamed. And he was like, no, 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 don't take it that way. I like it. And I had lost weight over time. And then, of course, after I had Chris, I gained a shit ton of it because my child was like the size of a fucking boulder. Um, but today's women, I feel just, it's like, they've got this idea. Oh, this is going to, no, actually, I think you guys will agree with me. It's this weird pedophilic thing yeah. where mm -hmm. they want women to look like children. So that yeah. whole chopping off of your boobs and making them look like prepubescent boys or girls. And it's fucking disgusting because pinups shouldn't look like that. Pinups should look like what's on the screen right now. And for men, we should have men that look like Wolverine or Conan. That's what male pinups were. I remember when I was at SDSC, I was living in the dorms, and some of the girls had Chippendales calendars. And I mean, these Good were muscular them. men with fucking G-strings on, you know, male G-strings, where like everything was bare except for this tiny package that, you know, had the the twig and berries in them, but you could, it was so tiny, you could see the outline. And that was cool and that was okay. But now it's like this weird childlike androgyny. Yeah. And it's fucking gross because when I read comics, I don't want to see kids. When I read comics, I want to see developed men and developed women looking fucking awesome, kicking ass, being men, being women, and just having the time of their lives. And even if they're a trans male or a trans female, still looking like a, a man or a woman you know the you want adults that look adult yeah yes, I exactly. want adults, and i've noticed a lot of characters they're either f like female characters are forced to look like men or they're forced to look like children and it's like we don't want to look at children that yeah, yeah. it's gross look at that cat woman image there she's powerful she's beautiful yeah her anatomy is broken who the fuck cares the, the yeah, no woman or very few women could, women could achieve a, a look that even remotely looks like that. But she is what's in what she is within every woman. That image is within every woman. And even though they may not look like that on the outside, that is what the man sees when they are in love with a woman. And we have lost that, and that has been perverted by the left. And I am so sick of that shit. You're not the only one. There are so many people out there, but there's a lot of people that are afraid to speak up. And even sometimes I'm afraid to speak up. But people want to see muscular men again, and they want to see really hot women. And there's, you know, what? there's people out there that like the skinny nerd looking men too. And that's okay. And the same thing with women, but they, they shouldn't be looking. love too. Look, I am. Yes, exactly. Six. I am not ripped. I'm very average. But let me tell you, my mental strength is fucking ripped. 
Yeah, it breaks his underwear. And that is all I have to say. It is symbolic. Look, and we need to return to these ideals. I completely agree. Like, my husband is also average, but his mental strength is like the size of the fucking Hulk. And I honestly, he's very handsome and attractive to me, but I am also attracted to his brain power. It's like, holy shit, this is really a turn on. I love the fact you are so intelligent. But when they draw characters, even the cerebral characters, they still look like children. And it's like Ugh. cerebral men and women don't look like children. They still have the attributes of adult men and women. I wanted, as a kid, let me tell you, I longed for adulthood. I hated being a child. Being a child was the worst time in my life. Adulthood was freedom. Adulthood meant I finally got to make my own decisions. It meant that, you know what? If I fucked up, it was all on me. If I succeeded, it was all because of me. And that was the greatest freedom of my life when I got out from under my parents. Y y would you mirror that, Kat? Would you echo that? Yeah, pretty much. Um, and uh, quite frankly, it... Uh... I'm sorry, Janelle, I'm going to say something and you do not have to agree with me. The audience doesn't have to agree with me, but I'm going to say it because I'm I'm particular. It really, really bugs the shit out of me when you take something that was originally aimed at adults and and suddenly you make it safe and uh, make it palatable and accessible for children and I am specifically talking about things like Ghostbusters. The first movie was definitely made for adults. You look at how much Vankman is just a fucking horn dog on, you know, poor Dana. Um, and just the jokes that are made and everything that was made for adults. And then you look at Ghostbusters Afterlife and it's safe and bubble wrapped and and uh, bouncy and floofy and, and silly and right down to the fact that the fucking proton packs are not you know, heavy. They're not heavy. You know, everything is nice for the kids and it's palatable for the kids. And quite frankly, they've been doing that, but in a sexual way to almost fucking everything. And, you know, making everything for kids, but sexual. And it disgusts the living shit out of me, like with uh, Steven's Universe. No, that doesn't offend me at all. I, okay. We showed Chris go, but Ghostbusters 1 and 2, and we know that was for adults. Look, my we first really showed Chris the adult stuff when, when we introduced him to Spaceballs. And there are some <laughs> fucking adult shit. Like, there that was is a lot the, of adult shit in that. Yeah, that was probably the first movie we showed to Chris that had a lot of adult themes. Now, like I said, we like Ghostbusters Afterlife because it felt to us that it was the fans kids that movie was made for the fans kids mm -hmm. so i know some people didn't like it because of that but for watching chris he he likes that movie but he told us ghostbusters is still superior to ghostbusters afterlife and so did his you friend. raised they, a good kid <laughs> yes and i found out a lot of kids who saw ghostbusters and then saw afterlife still think ghostbusters is superior but they like the fact that this time it was from the kids point of view it still didn't replace the originals but it was just nice to see, okay, now it's the kids that get to have fun fighting the ghosts. And so, no, that was not offensive at all, Kat, because that's how my son feels. Like I said, we've been showing Chris the movies from the 80s and the 90s that we all like grew up with and got to experience. And um, Chris likes them. And he likes, one of the reasons he likes them is because they're not aimed towards kids. It's not talking down to him. He likes the fact that he can still be a kid and enjoy a movie that is more for adults. Because, you know, us growing up, we watched these movies as kids and we didn't get all the adult humor at the time frame, but we still really appreciated it. And so when we came back and watched it as adults and we picked up on those jokes or those lines, we're like, holy shit, this is even better than I remembered. <laughs> like, I, I can't wait for Chris to be a we little can bit do a older. Show on Ghostbusters. Pardon? We can do a show on Ghostbusters. I would love to do a show on Ghostbusters. Cat's getting tired. 
I'm right. really drunk and we have guests coming in tomorrow. We should probably. Oh my get God. <laughs> oh, it's 10. Well, remember I told you our friends that live in Tucson, they're coming in for Comic Con and they oh, arrive shit. tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. I, like, I think they said between 8 and 10. <laughs> oh no. Okay. No, so... this was so fucking worth it though, guys. This has made my week. Oh, oh good. Shit. I'm so glad. That... Let me make an ending statement here. Okay. Okay. I will use the example of Ripley in Aliens, okay? The fact of the matter is that character is endured. It does not resonate with every woman, but it resonates with every mother. And the fact is, every mother doesn't face a giant alien. Every mother doesn't pick up a flamethrower or machine gun and go fight. But the fact of the matter is, the internal struggle of every mother is facing those fears of, can I be a mother? Can I walk down that dark mat, that 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 dark path, that maze of monsters, to face against my own deepest fear, the dark, monstrous mother that I don't want to become? That's what these stories are for, and that is why it resonates. Just like you know, films like in Conan, Valeria, for every woman who doesn't feel like a mother, or you know, the woman who is a tomboy who doesn't fit in, there is a place for her. And these are symbolic. They're not supposed to be real. These are the language of the mind. These are the language of dreams. And that is what we're being robbed of right now. We're being forced to be eternal children dependent on the state. And it's time for us all to say, fuck no. Okay? I, I will have to say, is she just to add on a positive note, a lot of people that I know that have kids Chris's age are actually showing them the movies that Chris and I are because they know that the movies that are coming out today aren't as great. So we're not the only ones that are showing the movies that we grew up with from the 80s and the 90s because they don't have that. And I know some yeah. like, okay, they've got the Marvel and DC movies. Okay, great. They got the Marvel and DC movies, but are they as in-depth or as dark as the movies that we grew up with. Cause we're even showing Chris, you know, stuff from the seventies. Like it doesn't need to be sanitized and the heroes don't always have to win that, you know, sometimes it's okay to have that bittersweet ending. The empire where... strikes back. Sometimes exactly. it just doesn't fucking work out. That's one thing that made that movie brilliant. The fucking empire won. Nobody was expecting that. And I think that's why that's pretty much everybody's favorite star Wars film. Because it had a more realistic ending. So, yeah. But sometimes was... you don't win, but there's still hope. Exactly. In fact, I'm going to say that uh, the last Ronin, the Eastman and Laird finale, is just like that. A lot of people don't agree with me on this, but I honestly think one of Milius's best films and one of my favorite films is Red Dawn. God, because it really movie. does tackle being young. It tackles the fact that war is not easy, and sometimes the battle, you're not going to make it through. That's reality. But there's a reason to fight, and there's a reason to die. There is purpose. And don't let anyone rob you of that. And Eggs. titties are great. Yes, exactly. And I can't wait till my son is a little bit more mature to appreciate Red Dawn because I know for a fact he's going to love that fucking movie. Oh, and Spring Hill, I thought you guys were arriving at between 8 and 10. I just told they're arriving from 10 to noon, so I have a reprieve. <laughs> awesome. All right. All right, we should go because, yeah, I'm very drunk and I should probably go to sleep. <laughs> night and night, everyone. Have a good time. Good night.